Hi, and good evening to our webinar for our Masters in Cybersecurity. Uh, we will just give it sort of 30 seconds so people get in, and then we'll get underway. Uh, I can just see people sort of entering, so we'll give it just a few more seconds and then uh, we'll start. So welcome. Uh, today is our Masters in Cybersecurity with the University of London. Uh, for the online masters, uh, we will have an interview with Dr. Fazi Idrez, uh, Fazi Idrez uh, later in the webinar. So let's get underway. So today we'll be covering a couple of different aspects. We'll be looking at a program overview, the application process, the key dates, uh, the interview, and then we will end with a live Q and A. So. What is the online masters in cybersecurity? Uh, we'll start with a quick video, which will uh, give you a bit of an overview into this course. So this course is a brand new course, which was launched for the first time in October. So our April intake will be the second cohort that we have. The course comp is comprised of 10 core modules and a final project and is 100% online, making it self-paced and flexible. And we would look for a work commitment of about 12 to 15 hours of study a week per module. So the nice thing about this course over a campus course is that self-paced self and flexible element of it. The 12 to 15 hours of study that we would look for each student to do a week is completely uh, capable to be fit around a full-time job. And as we 
don't have to be online at any particular time. It makes it flexible to international students who want to study at a UK university and people who want to study around work. You can complete a couple of hours a day to complete the sort of 15 hours, or alternatively, some people do very little during the working week and then almost dedicate two full days at the weekend. The work pattern does have to be self-motivated, but as long as you can fit that timing in, it's completely flexible around how you'd be looking to work. So what will you be learning? The courses which you'll be learning in this course are cybersecurity foundations, security management and governments, cybercrime, applied cryptography, network and infrastructure for security, computer system security, software and application security, security and behavioral change, information privacy, there's a research method for cybersecurity, and then the final year project. The nice thing about this course is there are three exit points as well. So if you complete the first five modules, you will gain enough credits to get yourself a post-grad certificate. If you complete all of the taught courses, you'll gain enough for the post-grad diploma. And then once the dissertation is completed, you'll complete a full master's qualification. Now, here's a little video about the learning platform that you will be uh, learning to use. So the course is designed with the help of Royal Holloway with academic direction, but run from the University of London, who are the awarding body. The uh, aim of the Coursera platform is we are here to deliver the computer and tech side of the course. Now, what you can see in the video is the learning platform where on a weekly basis, you will be given the 10 to 12 hours of study, but that will all be delivered in week one for you to self-pace. There will be a, a mixture of uh, reading material, online reading material, as well as the academic course books and video lectures. There'll be graded assignments at the end of, or graded exams at the end of each course as well as discussion forums that you can discuss other aspects of the course with your cohort, giving that same community that you would have in a campus course, but delivered through an online community. We also have uh, online uh, webinars as well with the faculty, but these are also recorded so that you will be able to take them at a time that's convenient to you and they aren't mandatory to attend. So the admissions process for this course has two entry routes. You have the direct entry or performance-based entry. Uh, we've done this so that we can get, make the course open to as many students as possible. So for the direct entry route, we would be looking for the equivalent of a UK second class upper degree, which is the equivalent of a 2.6 GPA in America. And if you meet this requirement, you can enter through the direct, direct entry route. Alternatively, we have the performance-based route, which is for anyone who has not achieved this and has a third class degree or lower than a 2.6 GPA. But we will also look at professional experience and qualifications. With the direct entry route, you'll be taken straight onto the course uh, uh, to complete the full masters. Whereas with the performance-based route, you would have to complete two modules at a grade of above 40% before transferring onto the MSc. As well as having to meet the requirements for the direct entry route or the performance-based route, we would also expect all of our students to meet an English language proficiency. There are a few different ways, and there's more details on this on our website. Um, so Nisha will be sharing a link to the uh, language proficiency in the chat, but here are a few of the different ways you can meet it, either via the IELTS, Duolingo, Pearson's test, Cambridge certificate, or the TOEFL, all of which have different grades which need to be met, but are the best ways to meet onto the course. So the program structure. The course can be studied anywhere between two and five years and is self-paced as previously said. The course load will vary, but you can take a maximum of two modules at a time. 
So if you are to take one module, you would be looking for 12 to 15 hours of study. For two modules, you would be looking for upwards of 30 hours of study a week. So please do make sure that you have the time available before deciding to take two modules. And as I said, there are three awards available. On the completion of 60 credits, which would be one core module and three optional modules, you would gain the postgrad certificate. For one core module and seven optional modules, for 120 credits, you would get the postgrad diploma. And if you complete all 10 core modules and the project, you would complete the full master's qualification. The tutor support, we host different times, twice a week. We have live recorded sessions and access to live tutor support and live Q and A's. So although you are studying online, we do still put access to support within it to help you study throughout the time. Now the course has varying costs depending on your geographic location. It costs either 9,000 or 12,000 pounds, depending on if you live in a band A or band B country. With the geographic location, it is the country that you are located in, not your country of birth or where you hold uh, your current passport, but where you are currently living. The course is pay as you go and can be paid through our online uh, portal or via our flywire payment system. And it's paid directly to the University of London through the student portal online. The registration and payment deadline will be on the 27th of March. This is a hard deadline, so once you have been accepted onto the course, we would recommend making that payment as early as possible, because if you miss the 27th of March, you won't be able to start on the course. Uh, if you don't know if you are in a band A or band B country, Anisha will be sharing with you a link to the bandings in the chat now. But also, here are the band A countries, if you would have to quick look at those. And here's the band B. So if you are part of a band A country and you are paying module by module, each of the 10 credit units, 15 credit units, sorry, are worth 750 pounds, which is paid every 10 weeks. Or if you're paying to do two modules at once, it would be 1,500 pounds. And then the dissertation will be 1,500 pounds as well. If you are in one of the band B countries, the modules will be £1,000 or £2,000 per every 10 weeks if you are looking to do two modules at a time, and the dissertation will cost £2,000, making the total cost of the course £12,000. Now, who is the ideal, ideal student for this course? The students we're looking for are students who are looking to move into roles such as a business information security officer, security consultant, or security specialists. We're looking for anyone who is looking to either reskill and move into a cybersecurity role, or who works in the field and is looking to move into a management level role. We aren't necessarily looking for anyone with a computing background, as this is a non-technical degree where we're not looking for people to have previous coding experience as a prerequisite for the course. We're looking for people who are looking to learn practical applied skills and skills in the cybersecurity field and skills that are there to meet the latest industry standard and demand. Cybersecurity is a massively growing field within all sectors of business. And we are looking for people who want to join this exciting time as the field moves forward. So the application process for this course. Applications are currently open. And the link above for london.ac.uk will take you through to our course page where you'll be able to apply. Uh, Nisha will be sharing a link to this page in this uh, chat box now. But if you scroll down halfway through the page, you will find the apply now button. When you click it, it will ask you two questions, which is the award level and the entry route you, go, you need to go to through. If you have got a bachelor's degree with a UK equivalent of a second class lower, then please enter by the performance, uh, the direct entry route. And if you are looking to go down a different route, then please enter in the performance based pathway. Once you click this, there will be tabs across the top, which you will need to fill out all of the tabs. If you do miss any tabs or don't provide the 
required documents, we will contact you to ask you for further clarification. But without the required documents, we will not be able to make you an offer. So we will need your study details, as well as your personal details. We have a form on equal opportunities. And then we will need your education, where we would need you to upload copies of your certificates and transcripts and any other certification you have that's relevant to the application for this course. We will ask you for your employment and you may want to upload a CD. Then there will be a form on accreditation and access arrangements. There's a final page to upload any further documents you find relevant and then a declaration which you will need to sign about the course and about completing the application. After that, please submit the application. So on the application checklist, you will need a scanned copy of your ID, your supporting statement, which is a personal statement about why you're looking to complete the course, which is up to 250 words, scanned copies of your academic transcripts, scanned copies of your academic certificates, your resume is opt optional, your professional certificates, and your English language proficiency test scores. If you do not have an English language test, then we will request this at a later date if you do not have further proof of English. Uh, once you're through, this is what the online platform will look like for when you make your application. So the registration process and next steps. How do I register and which module shall I take first? The registration, as some students have currently made their applications and have their offer letters, uh, is not currently open. It will be opening in the coming weeks. Once we open the registration, you'll need to log into the, the student portal, click register now button and register for your modules. You will either pick one or two modules for the first session with the first module that you will need to sit being the foundations for cybersecurity and you have until March 27th to register for this course. After completing your registration and making the first payment, you won't receive access to the first modules until April the 17th, but you will receive access to the orientation course. This will take approximately three to four hours to complete. And also there's the program policy, which you will need to sign to agree to the terms and conditions of the masters. Also, it's good to start the orientation, as this is the first time you'll gain access to other members of the course and be able to move into open dialogue with students who will be sitting this course. Now, receiving your degree certificate, although this course is 100% online and everything from application to graduation can be done without stepping foot on campus, we do still run a graduation ceremony, which will be taking place at the Barbican Centre in London. Once you have all 180 credits completed, you will have two options to either have your physical email sent out, sorry, physical certificate and transcript sent out to you. Or if you would like, as I say, we have a graduation ceremony in London, which you can attend. So if you can't come to the UK, we will still get the physical copy of all your documentation to you. So there is no need to worry. The key dates for the course. So the applications are now open. They will be open until March the 13th with the registration deadline on the 27th and classes starting on the 17th. These are hard deadlines once again. So if you do miss the application deadline and your application is not submitted by March 13th with all documentation required submitted, you will not be able to enter this intake. Likewise, if the registration is not completed by the March 27th deadline, then you will not be able to register for this course and classes do start, as I said, on April 17th. If you have got some modules that you've previously sat that you would like to put forward for recognition of prior learning, then the March 13th deadline is also relevant for this and you will need to apply for recognition of prior learning. Although to do this, there is an additional fee of 61 pounds. And then all supporting documents will need to be submitted for recognition of prior learning by the 17th of March. So now we will have an interview with the programme director, who is Dr. Fazia Idrez. So welcome, 
welcome to our webinar and um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar. Ah, you're very welcome. So uh, the first question that we've had put forward for us today is how can students access academic support during their studies and can they connect with their professors if they have any questions about the topics? Yes, thank you, Matt. Uh, of course, uh, each module actually provides uh, the students with access to the online forums and different discussion areas, which allows students to communicate with each other as well as with the academic staff related to that module. And each module is being guided by a module leader. And luckily for this program, uh, our module leaders are actually the academic subject experts, meaning that they are the uh, designer and developer of the module. So students will have actually direct access to the professors who have developed the course and who will themselves be actually delivering to the students. Ah, wonderful, thank you. So given the, the nature of online program, how do students socialize and network with one another? Uh, there are actually different communication tools, um, such as uh, discussion forums and Slack and Zoom. And these are different tools, which uh, these are to help students to socialize and network with each other and also to actually access to their academic staff. And I would say one significant feature of the program is availability of uh, universally integrated network of information security experts and who come from diverse backgrounds and experiences and they share their facilitating experiences with each other. So most of our students are really professional and with very good experiences of information security. I want to point, and I have heard one of the good things about sort of the, the social elements of what um, happens with the students is they quite often, although the Coursera platform is great, move their study groups into things like WhatsApp and do form those sort of social groups among them, which I think is nice. So what's your favorite topic on this program and why? Um, I would say I really like this program because uh, the program has different topics which are really close to my heart, I would say. And but uh, personally, I would say network security, because the module is full of uh, hands on practices on different network tools. And we have actually introduced cyber range first time in any distance learning program, uh, which enables students to simulate the real life cyber attack scenarios and learn how to respond in critical uh, cyber situations. Uh, cyber, uh, cyber range actually provides uh, an access to tabletop exercises which give students the actual experience of confronting an attack yourself and with hands-on practice using real attacks, attack scenarios, they can work together as a team to improve incident response and refine and test their defensive capabilities. So I would say no matter what industry or organization they are coming from, the maturity of their organizations, cybersecurity, or the types of scenarios you run on the, on the cyber range will give uh, the students the hands-on experience. They need to be ready when confronted by such uh, challenges in their real life. Ah, brilliant, that, that sounds amazing. So students wishing to understand how assessments and exams will be conducted, are there more practical tasks or is this more theory exams? Uh, assessments are actually a mix of, I would say, practical and theory exam. And there's a one exam, online uh, assessment exam at the end of each module. And mostly uh, 
the exam is open book and students are given 24 hours window to submit their answers and they can sit the exam from the comfort of their house. Actually, they don't need to go anywhere to any exam center or they don't need to go, come to the UK to sit for the exam. At that 24 hour window, uh, do, where, when do they find out the exam date of when the exams will have to be sat? Uh, the exam dates and windows, uh, it will be available on the Coursera student profile uh, one week, at least one week before the exam. So they will find that mostly the time is like from 10 a.m. For example, today's the exam. So from today, 10 a.m. till tomorrow, 10 a.m. They will have this 24 hours window to submit their responses. Ah, perfect. And if students were accepted through the performance-based entry, what does that mean for the students? Uh, the PPA route is for those students because we have uh, the aim of this program is to provide cybersecurity education to as many people as possible. So it's not necessary if you if that you have done the bachelor's in second class, if anybody doesn't have any bachelor degree and but they got good uh, cybersecurity experience. So they can come on this PBA route. And uh, it's like they have to actually first qualify for two modules. They have to take two modules and qualify. And if they are successful in completing those two modules, then they can actually go to the MSc route actually. And it's really good, I would say, like in previous cohort, one student was, he didn't have any bachelor degree, but he got very good experience of cybersecurity, 15 plus years, and he got different certifications. So now he's our student for MSE, and I can see really a good, you know, future for him because he, after completing this MSE, he can go for PhD actually. Ah, oh, wonderful. So it's a nice pathway into a PhD program if people want to move uh, in, into that route as well. Yeah. So uh, can you explain to students what is expected from them from the dissertation project? Uh, dissertation project is, I would say, the same as with any master's degree. It's, it's a student's opportunity to uh, choose the topic and work on the topic. If they like to work on some practical aspect, they, they have to select that sort of topic with the help of their advisors. There will be advisor with the students who will help them to choose the topic, to work on that. And they can actually, if they are working on some practical aspect, then they will have to do some labs, some experiments and bring that data and results and they can even go for some organizational case studies and bring some real life studies. So the dissertation, I would say, they, it's an area for them to choose for their future, whatever field in, because cybersecurity is a really vast field. So they will, they will get a chance through this dissertation to narrow down their field for future actually. Ah, uh, wonderful. And I'm assuming they don't have to choose any field going in. That would be chosen at the end of the course once the other modules have yeah. been. Yes, exactly. And on the course, uh, while the students are studying and are doing the core modules, what's the split between video lectures and online reading? Uh, well, there is no predefined ratio as such. I can't say like 50% video or 50% reading. It really depends on the topic. If the topic is a bit complex and complicated, so we really try to make more visual and more interactive so that the students don't find actually difficult to learn that topic. So sometimes it's 50-50, like 50 videos and 50 reading or different interactive uh, you know, activities. And sometimes it's like maybe 90% videos and 10% reading. So it really depends on the topic of the week actually. Uh, brilliant, thank you for that. And thank you for attending with us today and answering all those questions. It's been lovely having you today. Thank you so much, thanks. Abraham.
And next, we will be moving to a live Q&A on the course. Uh, I can see a lot of questions already uh, being asked. So if you do have any additional questions, then uh, please do follow up and answer any questions in the Q&A. And I will get through as many questions as we can over the, the coming time. Uh, the question that I think has been asked the most is around English language. Uh, so uh, the link that was shared, uh, I think, may not have been the right link. So this is the one that should be addressed regarding English language. English language professionally mentioned in the web page is for undergraduate courses, for postgrad courses. It is mentioned at the language requirements for our postgraduate courses differ by course. Please see our course page under entry requirements for more details. So if you do uh, have looked through that and uh, it, it isn't the right link, then please do go onto the web page or the landing page for the online master's in cybersecurity. At the bottom of the page, there is a section dedicated to English language requirement, and it will show you uh, everything that you need to know. Alternatively, if you do have any English language tests and you want to confirm if they are the right ones, uh, you can ask me directly. So I'm the EC, the Enrollment Counselor for the Online Masters of Cybersecurity. Uh, on the right of the page, there's a QR code. Uh, this will take you through to a booking link to book in time with me. So if you do have any questions that aren't answered today, or that um, you, you just like to ask anything further, or if you would like me to have a look over what other English language requirement you do have and see if they meet our requirements, then please scan that QR code or Nisha shared a link to my booking diary as well. So please click that link and I'm here to answer any questions about either English language or any additional subjects that you would like to know about the course. Okay. So. So uh, the first question being asked is, uh, do you offer graduate internships? Uh, not on this course. So the reason we wouldn't offer any sort of internships is we have international students and a lot of our students will currently be in full-time employment. So to put a mandatory internship into this course uh, would cause confusion because people and complications because people wouldn't want to be leaving their jobs to sit an internship. This course is specifically designed to sit outside and around work so that uh, no, no aspect like that would be required, so it can be completely flexible. Uh, second course, if you complete the MSc, do you also get a postgrad certificate on the way? Uh, no, uh, the awards that you would receive are for the final uh, certification that you receive. So whilst you work through, although sort of once you complete a number of modules, you qualify for a postgrad certificate, that is only if you leave the course with a postgrad certificate. You would not um, gain a certificate, a diploma, and then the masters uh, along the way. It, it, you would only be awarded your exit um, qualification. If I take one module at a time and not two modules at a time, how long will the MSc take? So, if you take one module at a time, then the courses would run as taught courses for around two years, and then you would have a year for the dissertation, which means that if you were to do one after the time without any breaks, it could take around three years. Although we also put in the option that you could take study breaks throughout that, say you have children and want to take the summers off while they're in, on, on summer holidays, you can opt out of a module, and take a study break and then come back after that 10 week period. Alternatively, if you were a teacher and you were off for the summer and had 10 weeks uh, where you had more time to study, you can increase your workload. The nice thing about the flexibility for this course is not that it's, it's not one or the other. You don't have to take two modules or one module and do that for the entire time of study. The option to move up and down with your workload it is flexible, and that's why we give you anywhere between two and five years to study. So if you were to do one at a time, then it would be completed in around three years. But if you were to put some 
uh, study breaks in there as well, it, it could take four, four or longer. Uh, so Perfect has asked, if I finish the MSc, will I get a job easier? This course will give you the skills required to work within industry and will put you on a good pathway to uh, get, get, get employment. That being said, there is no guarantee with, with anything. This would help you, as discussed previously, move into a PhD program or move into the realms of working within one of the discussed uh, areas as it would make you a professional within that field. There are obviously other factors when applying for any job, but uh, it, it should aid you within uh, building your career and moving your career forward into your desired industry. If my bachelor's degree is from an accredited university, do I still need to fulfill English language requirements by exams? So the English language requirements uh, is looked at on a case by case basis, and it will depend on multiple different factors. If you have just sat a bachelor's degree from a US university and that talk course is taught entirely in English, then there is a good chance that we would be happy to waive the English language requirements. Uh, if you sat that course a while ago, but were currently uh, working still in the USA and English is your primary work language, we may uh, also offer to waive the English language requirements. But if you sat your bachelor's degree 20 years ago at an accredited US university and you've been working in a country where English isn't your primary work language for the last 20 years and you haven't been using English in 20 years, then we may ask you to provide further use of English. So. We, we can waiver the English language requirement uh, having uh, sat at a university, but that does not mean that just because you sat at a university, we 100% would waiver it every single time. Uh, so the next question, I've already submitted the application and still waiting my honours certificate so that I may submit a scan document, or can I send the transcript in the meantime? Uh, we would look for both to be uploaded. If you have the transcript uh, for, or whilst completing the application, if you could upload whatever documents we, you have. So if you have your transcripts, please upload them in absence of your certificate. If anything further is required, the, the university will request that from you. Uh, the emails we send out do have a habit of going into so people's spam. So they sometimes don't get seen. So as they are important, please also keep an eye out for these as they may be requesting further documents. Uh, I would say upload any documents you have and then we will request any further documents if what you have provided does not meet the requirements for what we need. If a degree has not been obtained in the UK, how would we know it's UK equivalency? That's a very good question. Um, UK equivalency and international grades are a very hard topic to answer a question on, um, as two different universities from different um, countries may have different uh, uh, academic merit on top of the fact that you may have a bachelor's degree, which may be considered an ordinary degree in one country and not in another. Uh, also, GPAs across different countries uh, vary, as well as GPAs from different universities and different institutions within countries vary. So finding out what your GPA or UK equivalency is isn't as simple as doing a quick Google search, although doing a quick Google search is a good place to start as it will give you an idea. The best thing to do if you are unsure is to apply for the course if you apply for the direct entry pathway because you do think that you meet the requirements, if you are below the standard we are looking for, we won't reject you on that. We would move you to the direct entry pathway. So don't worry about applying for the wrong pathway. In the same sense as if you do think you don't meet it and you apply for the, the performance-based pathway, and then you are able to be given an offer, we would move you up to the direct entry pathway. So. Although we do make a distinction between the two, if you are unsure of your GPA and the UK equivalency of it, 
please do just make an application uh, and, and we will let you know where, where you sit within that. Uh, we, we have internal systems that we use to make, to make the, the, uh, the grades and look at the merit. Um, uh, do you have pathways towards a PhD program in cybersecurity within UOL, or is it colleges after the completion of the master's degree? So you would need to meet, complete the uh, minimum qualifications to enter a PhD. Um, obviously, there are different factors on applying for any PhD. Uh, you may need to be within the UK to uh, join a PhD program as research is a large element of it. And this would probably have to be uh, applied for directly with the University of London uh, and not with Coursera. Uh, this, once again, has a lot of different factors. Uh, doing the course will not automatically gain entry to a PhD program. There are factors such as gaining funding for PhD programs, meeting other requirements, uh, the grade you complete within your cybersecurity. So although this would put you on the pathway towards a PhD, uh, gaining a master's in cybersecurity does not automatically make you qualify for a PhD program. You would need to apply for that separately on completion of the master's. Uh, what options are available for earned credit? How many credits are you able to offer? Uh, if this is for the recognition of prior learning, um, you would need to apply through our, um, our online portal for recognition of prior learning and pay the fee to have that um, reviewed from our, our internal team. Uh, we look at that once again, case by case. Um, I think uh, I may be wrong, I would need to double check. So please, if could someone, if whoever asked that question, could you please book in a meeting with me or email me so that I can double check on that. But I think it could be up to uh, three modules that we would waiver um, for that, uh, as long as you meet the requirements for those. Uh, we'd be given access to the university journal resources for the dissertation. Uh, you will be given access to, as, as part of the course, the online library with the University of London, which contains academic textbooks, journals, and everything else you would need to complete your dissertation. Uh, so, and if you're in the UK, you can also gain a library card to gain access to the university library as well. Um, so if you are here, there, there's the library options, but otherwise everything you do need for this course, including all academic textbooks is provided as part of the fee for the course. So you wouldn't need to buy any books and also all the journals you would need to complete your dissertation should be able to gain access through the online library. Is this course suitable for someone who already has completed a bachelor's in cybersecurity? Yes, uh, this would be a master's level of qualification over a bachelor's level qualification. So we would be taking it a step further than what you have previously studied. Uh, I would recommend before doing any master's that you look at the uh, course curriculum and the modules and make sure that it differs from the skills that you've already learned and make sure that it is the right course for yourself. And then if it is something you are looking to move into further, then the uh, cybersecurity masters on top of the bachelors could be a, a good route to go down. In terms of recognition of previous learning, would this be considered for dropping off some modules which contribute to the degree? So as I say, the, uh, the recognition of prior learning uh, is there to waiver modules that you've sat. Um, and the grades you've received in your prior learning would count towards the, the masters. So the one thing I would say if you are applying for recognition of prior learning is the quality and level of the education that you have previously sat will have to meet the requirements of this course. If you have some bachelor's degree modules, which are level six modules, they would not waiver the modules for the masters because it's a level seven qualification. 
uh, having done some certification in uh, cybersecurity from an online program, uh, once again, may not meet the requirements for. It would have to be an accredited and graded course, uh, and, and it would have to be provable. So recognition for prior learning, uh, just because you feel you know and understand the uh, topics as you may have done them through work or through personal study, does not mean that uh, you will gain recognition of prior learning. What you would need is both certification and qualifications that meet a master's level uh, to, to apply for this. If they do meet that and they do follow the same course curriculum that we study within our course, then they would contribute towards the degree and you would be able to waiver those modules. And the second question asked by the same student is, what is the prospect for progressing to a PhD study? Uh, as, as I previously said, uh, that's quite an open-ended question because there are a lot of other contributing factors in moving on to a PhD. So uh, it would put you on the right pathway to apply for a PhD, but because of uh, grades, places, um, funding, uh, area of study that you're looking to specialize in can, can all have factors in whether a place onto a PhD is granted. Uh, it, it's quite an open-ended uh, question. So I, I, you, you would need to graduate and then make your case for a PhD before that question could be answered. Uh, so Bernard's ask, I wonder if there's a detailed sort of prerequisite. Um, uh, my experience is more administrative and managerial, and I have little to no experience with coding of any kind. So I have some hesitations. I'm also concerned about any mathematical courses, work that has no algorithmic and step-by-step -step instructions. My interest is more in high-level management along the lines of ITIL, and my research interest is in human factors of security. So with this course, um, there is no uh, detailed prerequisite for the course because every student applying for the direct, um, sorry, the performance-based path grade has a very, very different uh, academic and professional background. So we have to look at each student as they come to, towards us. Uh, the best thing to do for that would be to make an application and you would explain to us why you think you would be a good person for this course. Uh, we aren't looking for mass prerequisites for this course, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, this isn't a course like a bachelor's in computer science where we are teaching coding. So you would not need to have any particular maths foundation uh, to, to sort of move forward with an application for this course. Uh, I would like to know if I could start the course now and I only later fill out the English language requirements. I'm asking this because it takes the TOEFL exams now. I think I won't achieve the needed score. Uh, un unfortunately, no, that wouldn't be a possibility. The English language is in place to start the course because we are looking to see if you meet the language requirements to be able to study at this level. So you can start your application now and you have until the 13th of March to submit all documentation. So if you wanted to submit an application now, you may be offered a conditional place as long as you complete the English language requirements before the 13th of March, but you would not be able to start the course and then later fill in the English language requirements. The requirements are there to make sure you meet the standards required before starting the course. I, hi, I'm a British citizen. Do I need to provide English certification considering my education is done from India? Uh, once again, I, I would need more detail to answer this question. Uh, being a British citizen doesn't solely mean we would waive the English language requirement. 
uh, we could look at how long you have been in the UK, how long you've been working within English and your education with India. Was that education completed in English or in a different language? Uh, once again, the best thing to do would be to submit your application and our admissions team will tell you if further education or further English language, English language is required. Uh, I saw 9,000 to 12,000 as the cost for this course. How can I be sure the actual cost of this course? So uh, Nisha shared a link earlier for the banding, which is uh, band A or B, depending in where within the world you are currently living. As I say, it's not done on nationality. It is done on where you're currently located. So uh, if you uh, click that link, which should still be in the chat, uh, it will have a list of countries for band A or band B. If you're in a band A country, you'll be paying £9,000 or, as I said, £750 per module. If you're in a band B, uh, it will be £12,000. I had a student the other day ask me uh, if they, so they were from Pakistan and from Australia, and they were asking if they were to be paying the uh, the rate for Pakistan, or if they'd have to pay the higher rate for Australia, as they were currently working in Saudi Arabia. As they are living and working in Saudi Arabia, the answer to that would be that they would not actually pay for Pakistan or for Australia. They pay for Saudi Arabia, although their nationalities are from those two countries. They're currently living and working in Saudi Arabia, so they pay as a band B student as they're living in Saudi Arabia. So from my understanding, we cannot get student finance for this course. Uh, Christian, uh, if you are talking about student finance UK, uh, yes, we do qualify for that. Uh, each person has different criteria for that. Uh, if you've tried to apply for that um, and not received it, it may be down to a couple of things. Uh, you may have applied early when the uh, student finance wasn't open because we weren't running a cohort. Alternatively, if you already have a master's degree, then um, you cannot apply for student finance twice. So if you have a bachelor's degree, then you can apply for student finance UK, as long as you are based within the UK. Uh, or if you have a master's already, then you can only use student finance once, so you would not be able to apply again for student finance to cover this course. Uh, would an MBA in management and 16 years experience as an IT project manager be enough for the requirements needed? Uh, as, as with all academic requirements, uh, it would depend on the grades received within the MBA in management. But with the 16 years, um, I, I don't make the final decision myself, but that does look like you would meet the requirements for this course. But uh, as I say, it would need, you would need to make an application and our admissions team would make the final assessment on that. Uh, will we be able to attend campus as some, as some period during this course? As a student of the University of London, you would have access to the library. Uh, so if you do want to come to campus, uh, that can be arranged. That being said, this course is 100% online. We don't hold campus-based lectures. So there wouldn't be the option to come and study on campus in a traditional format as this is a 100% online course. But if you are based in the UK or based in London, you want to come down and use the library, then the option to be on the campus is a possibility. I've received an offer for the MSc. I do not have an online degree, but I have applied with my 20 years of IT and two years in. Is it possible to register? Uh, if you've received an offer letter from us, then you will have been offered a place onto the course. Uh, it is not possible to register at the moment. Registration for the April cohorts are not currently open, but they will be opening in the coming weeks. So please keep an eye on that. And when they do open, it will be possible to register. As long as you've received your offer letter, once registration open, you will be able to register. Uh, so Anonymous has said, my degree was a 2-2, what will I have to show? Uh, so a 2-2 will meet the requirements for the uh, direct entry pathway. When you submit your applications, please do attach copies of both your transcripts and your certificates 
uh, copies of these will do uh, of the original documents. And that is all we would require as well as the personal statement and the, uh, the um, copy of your ID. But your transcripts and certificate are what you'll need to show for your application. Uh, Bernard has asked, what is the total cost of the program uh, in pounds? Uh, once again, that's been covered. Uh, depending on where you're located, Bernard, it will either be £9,000 in total or £12,000. Um, so, um, where can I find the application to apply, please? Um, in Egypt, which with the level of English should I have, and how much do fees uh, if I need to finish the English certificate? Uh, so the English fees are all dependent on uh, which qualification you are trying to get. So TOEFL, Duolingo, um, IELTS all have different costs. Uh, some you have to go to test centers, which need to be booked. So you'll need to research that yourself, as there's not one cost for all of it. Uh, as for the application, uh, if you go to the landing page or through the link that Nisha sent you, about halfway down the page, there is the application to apply. So please click where it says apply now. Alternatively, if you go onto the Coursera page, on the top right hand corner, there's an apply now button that will take you to the University of London page where you can make your application. Um, and uh, they've also asked uh, which level of English do they need to have for an Egyptian student? The level of English is the same for all students. Uh, it will need to meet the requirements made on that page that was previously provided. Uh, just to confirm what I understand, so for a two-year deadline, that's two courses each 10-week sessions through the summer and dissertations another year. Uh, yes, that, that's correct. You have understood that. To complete in a minimum of two years, you would have to sit two modules consecutively in 10-week sessions and then complete the dissertation within a year. Uh, can you please describe the payment schedule? Uh, so the payments are made in advance of starting each module. So there's a new module starting roughly every 10 weeks. You would need to make the payment for either one or two modules every 10 weeks. So if you're a UK-based student and you're sitting one module, it would be a payment every 10 weeks of £1,000 for two years and then £2,000 for the dissertation. Alternatively, it would be a payment of £2,000 every 10 weeks if you were to be sitting the dissertation or uh, the course over a two year period and then £2,000 again for the dissertation. Uh, so that's uh, the, the time. Um, I am an HGND holder in electricals. Do I have a chance to apply? Once again, uh, the HND in itself would not meet the requirements for the course. So you could have a look at entering through the direct entry pathway, but you would need work experience within a similar field. Um, uh, and, and we look at that case by case. Uh, just on the HND, you would not meet the requirements. So you would have to have additional uh, supporting uh, requirements or, or sort of knowledge that would make you uh, meet the requirements. So can I take a vary, can I take vary the number of modules taken depending on my personal circumstances? Yes, so that is the advantage of the course. I've talked about whether you do one or two modules at a time. As your circumstances change, that can go up and down. So you could start the course on one module at a time for the first 10 weeks, and you could do that for the first session, second session, third session. And then if time frees up and you wanted to move up to two modules, there is the option to do that. And then you could start taking two modules. Alternatively, you could start on two modules. And if you realize the workload was too high, on the second session, you can drop down to one. It's not all or nothing. You can make the decision to move up and down every 10 weeks as is flexible around yourself. So all you need to do is look at the next 10 week period that you have, and then make a decision on how much time you wish to dedicate. Uh, Sorry, we are now at the, at the end of the hour. So if you do have any follow-up questions and there's anything I haven't been able to get around to answering, then please do scan the QR code on the right-hand side. 
And please do book in some time with me. Um, I have availability all week. So please book in a time that's convenient for yourself and I will give you a call and answer any questions that you have further about the course. Uh, once again, thank you, uh, Fazia, for joining us today and answering questions. And I uh, hope you all are able to join us for our April cohort. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening.